Hello everyone, Mike here with another off-season video. Uh, I'm look, looking for more like collections of things to show you and uh, uh, I just thought I'd show you some, and this is definitely some, a tiny, tiny subset of my CD collection because <laughs> most of it's just on shelves or in boxes and there's quite a lot of it and this is just a tiny, tiny fraction of it. This is like the opposite of my uh, Sega collection that I showed you last week. This is like 1%, but this gives you an idea of the sort of stuff that I buy. And What the hell happened? Oh, I see. It's got... This one's showing my... Uh... <clears throat> the moisture of my hands. Anyway, uh, well, let's get this uh, started with uh, ACT... Circus Pandemonium, which I didn't listen to that that much. It was, as you can see, it was on clearance. It's got a drill hole right there. It's um, not very, uh, not very interest, uh, not very exceptional modern prog things. Uh, I guess they're like talented people and all, but uh, I didn't find much of interest musically in that. There's some cheesy spoken word parts in the, on that album. That's the main thing I got there. And um, here we have uh, ELO Time, sort of more or less completing my ELO collection there. I'm not really sure that I need the... Uh, I'm not sure that I need Balance of Power or uh, any of the uh, reunion effort things. I'm sort of a semi-completist about that sort of stuff. But... But yeah, I, I finally have time. I think that was like the last of the first run of albums that I bought, and I'm, I'm probably going to just stop there. But yeah, when I, I, I think I told you that in a previous vlog, that ELO were like my first favorite band, and I, I still have a sort of nostalgic soft spot for them. And uh, here we have a Fire, bio Fire Ballet, rather, Night on Bald Mountain. It's... Uh, it hasn't really done all that much for me. It never really has. But I got it on CD now. Which uh, and, and there's like a really poorly recorded live version of Pictures of a City. You know, the King Crimson song is a bonus track on there. It's, eh, it, it's very derivative American prog knockoff thing. It, it's just never really done much for me. And here we have In and Out of Focus, the first real Focus album. Which, uh, again... Complete. I still don't have their last two. I mean, their last two from their first run, which is uh, uh, Mother Focus and Focus Con Proby, neither of which is generally well regarded. I, although Focus Con Proby is kind of interesting because they kind of went into a more jazz fusion direction. It has PJ Proby on it for some bizarre, unknowable reason. Uh, those ones are actually kind of hard to find. That one's actually kind of hard to find these days because it's out of print. And uh, this is Gasoline 2. <laughs> I love the cover art on that. Those Danish albums have... There's some really wacky sort of cover artists they have in Denmark for some reason. It's That one actually kind of sucks. <laughs> like, no offense to Danes there, but they didn't really get, start getting good until their fourth album, and that one's just kind of... It, it sounds really amateurish, but I'm sure that back in the day, you know, rock and roll sung in Danish was kind of a revelation. And, oh, yeah, this is kind of a be, be careful about joke gifts because they might bite you in the butt. A uh, friend of the show, uh, David Perkins, I gave, I found a copy of David Getty's Run, Joey, Run on LP. And he wound up ripping it and hand, handing this off to me. Now, you know, Run, Joey, Run is probably in the bottom 10 worst hits of the 1970s. For those of you who don't know it, uh, don't really sort of seek it out. It's it's really bad. It's it's The producer is the same guy who brought us uh, what might be my vote for the worst hit of the 1970s, Playground in My Mind, which again, just don't, don't, don't do this to yourself. <laughs> and here we have uh, Gilgamesh, one of the Canterbury bands, uh, fronted by the late, great keyboardist Alan Gowan. That one's really solid, really good, excellent album. And here we have uh, H2O, Due, which is the second 
This is the Italian uh, ladder uh, prog revivalists from the late 90s, early 2000s, and this is their second album, which is their first one's called Uno Punto Sei, which means 1.6, and um, it's a lot better than this one. This one's not bad, it's just not quite as exciting. Not quite as interesting as their first one. They switched to English vocals, which is kind of a disappointment. Um, looking in the stack. <laughs> anyway, here we have uh, Kenso Yume no Oka, which I think that means Dream Hill in Japanese. That's uh, that one. A lot of people really love that album. It it's it's growing on me. You know, that was my first taste of them, and I was kind of eh, until I heard their second album, which is just brilliant. And uh, Kenso kind of have their ups and downs. They're never actually bad. The problem with this album mainly is just it was that early '90s, and it just has that really icky digital gloss all over it, which just has not aged very well. And here's a, a, a more recent album from them. Fabulous Mirabilibus de Con Bombicosi Scriptus. <laughs> that that title's quite a mouthful, I tell ya. But uh, I haven't really connected with that album. It's, it's kind of all over the map. They have uh, this uh, flamenco singer on there, which kind of makes for an interesting sound, but I'm, I'm really not quite sure if I connect with it. But it's interesting, and I like interesting. And here we have Annie Lennox's Diva, and it says 50 cents, but I actually didn't pay anything for that. They were just giving away CDs at the, uh, what do you call it? They were just giving away CDs uh, out in front of the Rasputin Records in uh, San Leandro. Uh, just like boxes and boxes of CDs that they just needed to get rid of, which... <laughs> and, yeah, this is from the CD era, so there's quite a lot of copies of it, but this is actually really good. I mean, I have gone on record as saying once programming became a credit that was regularly appearing on records, that production just started sounding really sterile. And... Uh, every once in a while you'll get a performer who can transcend that, and Annie Lennox is one, and uh, uh, Adele is another. Um, Al Badger lent me Adele's latest release, which uh, I would actually recommend uh, 21 before getting 25, but it's, it's still a really solid album, and it, it's mainly just because Adele is just such an A-plus top-drawer performer. So there's uh, there's my <laughs> there's my uh, thing to more recent listeners. Uh, this is Wanderlust by Little Atlas, which is uh, okay-ish modern progressive band. Uh, it, it hasn't blown me away, but it, it's decent, I suppose. Uh, sorry that those gets like so stacked so high and it's kind of look hard to look at them, especially at an angle. But oh well. Uh, here we here we have quite a find, Maelstrom. This was a, a band from Florida, active in the '70s, and their album only got a test pressing in Canada back in the day. But it it finally got a proper release around 1999, and that CD went out of print like like that. And it's since got another reissue, more recently, but this is the old original issue on, I think it's Black Moon? Let me look at that. Yeah, Black Moon Productions. But uh, I'm glad they they rescued that from the, the dust pile of history, because that album is really excellent. And even the bonus tracks, while they're not quite a... They're from 1980 and they have a slightly different lineup, but uh, the sound quality's not too good on them, but... It's still really, really excellent all the way through. I'd recommend that if you haven't heard them. And there's apparently another Maelstrom from Canada whose album has been posthumously released. And I've only heard samples of that, but I'm really excited by that. That uh, A lot of people think that's the fine of 2016, and I'm probably not going to disagree with them on that. Here we have uh, Il Tempo di Far la Fantasia by Montefeltro, which is uh, one of those... 90s prog acts that uh, has kind of fallen off people's radar, mainly because this has been out of print forever. This is another Musea release. 
Actually, have I mentioned that any of my releases are on Musea? But that's the French non-profit uh, record company that does a lot of prog stuff. And uh, they're still active today. They don't uh, do quite as many reissues as they do used to. But they, they still do release stuff from new acts. Not quite with the... Uh, not quite as... They're not quite as active as they used to be, but they're still around. And they still... Uh, a lot of their stuff is really good stuff. This album, um, I've heard mixed reviews of it. it. It really is kind of of that, you know, the chord workstation era. But I think they, I think they do a good job. I like that album. It's I, it's not a classic. Some people have called it a classic. I wouldn't say it's a classic, but it is really good. If you like, if you like the progressive sound and you kind of want to hear what Italians were up to in the early mid '90s, that's a, that's a good example. And this is the other Montefeltro album. Il Pescheroso Vestito alla Werther Mangio Luva Il Primo Delano. <laughs> Talk about a mouthful. I think the only the guitarist is the only one left from the original lineup, and that, that album's not as good as the first, unfortunately. It, it, it's much later. That was around 2000, 2000. What's the date on that? It might say on the back here. This is Mellow Records, which is an Italian company. I'm, I'm not seeing a date. Maybe if I look on the inside of the disc, da, 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 it's still not saying. But I, I seem to remember it was early 2000s that came out. It might have been 2000. I don't know. <laughs> Here we have uh, Moody Blues Octave, which there's one good song on that, and it's the song that you've already heard from that. It's uh, uh, Stepping in a Slide Zone, the first single, and Trust me, buy the single. Don't bother with the album. The album's pretty crummy. And here we have uh, Planeta Imaginario, Optical Delusions, which is a Spanish jazz rock band with a full horn section, which is not something you see too much anymore. Uh, I have their other album, which uh, is called Biomasa. And they're both they're both pretty good. It's If you like uh, the Canterbury sound, if you like Soft Machine, you'll probably like that. You'll probably like them. They're worth checking out. Here we have uh, Procol Harum Grand Hotel, and yeah, it's a Procol Harum album, all right. The track, the track where they have the singer from, uh, I think it's Fires Which Burnt Brightly. They have the singer from, well, one of the singers from, uh, what was that French vocal group that did all the Bach adaptations? The Swingle Singers. Yeah, they have like one of the Swingle Singers on that, and that's that's my favorite song off of that. It's uh, it it's. Uh, I don't think it's one of their best albums, but it's not bad. Uh, here we have uh, SBB's Welcome, which is not one of their best albums, but <laughs> track one on that is one of their best songs. What's it called again? Walking Around the Stormy Bay. That The first track on that is really excellent. That They're, they're from Poland. They're a venerable Polish band that have been around the block. They're still around. Or maybe I should say they're back around. I don't know. And here we have Sitonia Hotel Brun. It's another uh, Italian prog revival band. It, they're pretty good. Um, I, I'd heard their previous album, Confine, which is... That's kind of a quirky one. This one's not quite as quirky. It's, it's a little more just sort of vanilla, synth, symphonic, progressive rock. But it's good. It's good. And here we have uh, Spock's Beard V, or 5, depending on... How you do it? I never really got into Spock's beard. Their uh, their singer, uh, what was what was the guy's name? Singer slash keyboardist um, Neil Morse. I could never stand his voice. He had that really pinched, very nasally sort of '90s alternative rock voice, which oh god, it just grated on me to no end. I'm sure that uh, this this album is probably their best album. They, they finally learned how to write coherently which is kind of my problem with their earlier albums. But yeah, the long pieces actually kind of stick together. I'm sure that I would find at the end of the day to be like a classic piece if anyone else were singing, but uh, God, Neil Morse really sucks as a vocalist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. This is Teru Symphonia, Clockwork Earth. Another 90s prog band, this time from Japan. It's, eh, they're okay, I guess. And here's something that's not okay. 
uh, a la carte by Triumvirate. It's we're seriously into uh, collector uh, collect <laughs> completing the collection at this point because uh, they were kind of in a um, they were kind of in a uh, in between things. Uh, their singer Barry Palmer had like left halfway through the recording of this album. And they replaced him with this guy like named David Hanselman, who sounds nothing like him. So there's, n apart from not having any coherence to it, uh, they're trying to, like a lot of prog bands at the end of the 70s, they're trying to be a little more commercial, and it's not taking. And they, they try and, like, throw in a little prog to appease the older fans. And that's not working. It's just really, it's a, it's a mess. It's a big old mess. And uh, here, uh, finally, Yesterday's by Yes. Again, kind of in the uh, completing, completest thing. It's I, I have the older issues of their early albums, so I don't have any bonus tracks on them. So I kind of needed Dear Father and uh, the uh, long version of America. And that's, that's what that CD's good for, mainly, because the rest of it's all just stuff off of their first two albums. And uh, the original LP was just to... Uh, cash in on suddenly they were popular so anyway that's a small bit I, I was hoping to find that sonic cd disc but i never did so that's <laughs> that's that's it for now so see you around